Hey, good morning, Natalie. Hi, good morning, Michael. Yeah, so we got a good amount of stuff to go. There's Yami. Let me get her in here, and I'll make y'all co-hosts real quick. Hey, Yami. Right. So I just made you both uh, co-hosts and everything, and then I'll switch host powers before I head out after the meeting's over. But I think they don't have Zoom for for quantitative reasoning in English today. So I, I think it's just us um, for this part. And we're just going to go over kind of the degree overview stuff. Um, we'll go over the slide deck. I'm also going to share with them who their um, Quarta advisor is since we talked about that in our morning meeting today. So um, and if there's anything y'all want to add in terms of like going over the major or anything um, major specific based on your all's majors that you want to talk about, that's that's totally cool too. Um, we have a really mixed group in terms of what majors they all are. Um, we got everything um, you know, we have a lot of Hutchins in our group. We have a lot of undeclared, um, and we actually have a couple of, we have three bio students, a history, a psych, um, and a soch. So a lot of, a lot of different students, but I would say the vast majority of them are either Hutchins or undeclared. So I think the whole presentation is going to be good. So that's that way they can kind of hear what's going on. And then I'll, I'll share with them about the, um, the first year advising guide so they can kind of get a picture of what that looks like um but not saying like you know this is the like the be all end all of of everything it's it's always good to be flexible with with going into registration um i also like to describe like the degree that you get as like a pie chart where like part of the pie is general education and what that is and then part of the pie is your major and then the other parts the like general elective um, classes so I just wanted to to frame that for them um, before we start digging deeper into like you know, the academic requirements report and those sort of things in, in future days so um, I've had a lot of students in the one-on-ones ask me about the majors so I think this should be a pretty um, engaging conversation for what's what's going on so um, any questions or anything like that no, I don't have a question. Um, yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I also don't think I have any questions. Sure. And then um, we'll also promote um, the cultural affinity group is the um, the BSU and the, the Black Student Union and everything like that. So we'll definitely get that one out there for our students who want to attend that. And Erica Black's been doing the same thing that I've been doing where I'm just dropping the link into the chat box and then also saying, here it is at this time on the campus page. So, and it sounds like the affinity groups have been having a good amount of a pretty good turnout. So that's, that's good. So, cool. All right. Well, I will go ahead and just uh, let them all in. It doesn't look like everybody's here yet, but we'll, we'll take a second or two and then we'll, we'll get going. So. Hey, good morning, everybody. I just want to pet whoever's dog I hear in the background. I'm staying at my auntie's house in Washington, and so her neighbors have like really loud dogs. Wow. This morning. <laughs> that must be loud dogs if they're if you hear from the neighbors because the yeah <laughs> like a lot of places in washington the houses aren't close together too so <laughs> <laughs> right welcome in everybody thank you so much for being here on time um please get that camera on we want to see see your face and get some interaction going so and it's nice because today you don't have Zoom for the academic parts. So we just have this first kind of hour going on and then you get get a Zoom break, which is nice because I know we're all we're all a little fatigued about that. So definitely. Great. So today um, 
we're starting our discussion about majors. And I was just talking with Natalie and Yami that we have a really diverse group in terms of majors. We have a um, good amount of students in here that are all Hutchins majors. Um, we have a really big population of students who are undeclared with their major. Oh, Michael, I think you cut off. Hello? <laughs> Wait, can y'all hear him or is it just me? Oh, yeah. No, right? Yeah. All right, how about now? There you go. <laughs> Great, thanks y'all. I saw all of your faces kind of do something when it, when it cut out, so it was, it was good. So this is why it's important to have the camera on so we can get that, that facial feedback. Um, yeah, as I was saying, there's, there's a lot of different majors for students um, in our group, so that's why I think it'll be good just to go for an overview about all of them so you can kind of hear you know, what your options are. Um, the first thing I want to do, though, is I want to share some information with you all about advising in general. So because you all are in this Huerta program as part of you know, your Summer Bridge experience, you'll be assigned an individual Huerta advisor um, within the program. So it's either going to be Alma, Erica, or Dayana. And what I can do is I will send you all in some information either uh, via email about whom your advisor is so you can know how to connect with that person once summer bridge is over and they can be your go-to person on the regular when the semester begins um, to talk about any sort of advising questions or anything like that. And again, I'm, I'm still around and you all have my email so you can always um, check in with me too, but they will be your primary uh, Puerta advisor. and. With my group as well, it's 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 all split. So um, some of you are with each each one of those um, those individuals. So great. All right. So I wanted to start with a very brief kind of degree overview, and then I'll share some of the slides about all the majors. Um, I want you all to think of your degree like a pie. Um, you think about the like the pie charts that you read in math class and things like that. Or if you want, you know, if you're visual or if you're hungry right now, like I am, you know, think of it as an actual like physical pie. And we can talk about, you know, there being different flavors within each, each part of it uh, for your degree. So your degree is made up of 120 units. So that's, that's the amount of units you would need to graduate um, from a degree at SSU. Um, the about 50 units of that pie or whatever, you know, size slice you imagine that to be is going to be what's called general education classes or GE classes for short. These are classes that are going to be in all different kinds of subjects. And as we go along and bridge, I'll show you kind of like the pattern of what, um, those classes look like because they're all in different areas and some of you will be taking some of those i mean most of you will be taking those types of classes during your first you know couple of years um another slice of the pie a 40 unit slice of the pie is your major so that's what we'll be talking about today all the different majors that you can choose from and you'll you'll start to notice that a lot of times when you look at the majors they add up to to 40 units in terms of how many classes you need to take to get to, to 40 units with most classes being three or four units. So you can think about like your major is probably gonna be made up somewhere around 10 classes spread throughout the entire time you're here at SSU. And then the remaining part of the pie, so the, about 30 units left is what's, what's gonna be called university electives or just electives in general. This is, I like to think of this as like a group of units that you can just sort of play with. 
Um, you can take classes like Kinesiology 101 where there's you know specific exercise courses you might want to take or you could take a dance class you could take um, an activity class maybe in like the art department or something like that so these are kind of open for a lot of different options you can also if you were like oh I fulfilled all my major requirements but there's this one extra class I want to take, you can use it for that as well. You can also use your uni university electives and turn it into a, a second major or a minor um, and use those units towards that purpose. So you can go out there with, with a double major. So um, all up to you in terms of those electives, but that's kind of what the pie looks like in terms of getting your degree in terms of an overview of it. So you'll hear a lot of those words, especially during registration time, um, your major, your GE, and your electives. So I wanted to point out kind of how those all fit together and go into your, your degree. And when we get um, more specific and go over documents that show how all these are laid out, uh, you'll be able to see everything broken down into different categories if that's, if that's helpful for you to get more specific like that. So, great. Um, so in today's uh, module for day four, it's going to have um, some extra things to, for you to look at, including the financial aid um, or financial literacy components that we looked that I shared about yesterday. So you'll be able to get a look at budgeting and things like that. And the financial aid office is going to be available um, coming up in the next few days. So um, there'll be options for you to talk to somebody and talk to a financial aid advisor during drop-in times. And their link in Canvas just went live for the day that they're there. So if you have financial aid questions, no worries, there's going to be somebody there to support you, which is super awesome. Um, and also for, for the bio students, many of whom I've talked to already, I just got off the line with Dr. Dorico, who's the science and tech advisor, and if anybody else is thinking about doing biology, chemistry, and she's going to have um, drop-in meeting times as well, so you'll get a chance to meet her and, and talk with her, um, which is great. Okay, so let me go ahead and share this, share my screen, and the slide deck that I'm showing you is in the um, Canvas page, so you can look at it at your own pace as well. I just wanted to make sure that you all saw it and um, got some good information about that. So let me just navigate to the right page real quick and then we'll be right with you. All right. So I hope everybody can see the Sonoma State undergraduate majors. Um, yeah, Natalie, can I get a thumbs up if you're you're, all, you're seeing that? Okay, perfect, great. Natalie's the next person on my screen, so that's why I was I was asking her. So, um, yeah. So this is a really great uh, slide deck that has something with every single major and. I want to explain one of the most confusing things for me when I was a student. Um, people kept talking about schools at college, and I, I just kept getting confused. I'm like, well, college is school. Like, I'm at school. What, what are you talking about? So the word school really changes when we get to college because when we reach, um, when we get started at the university, a school is kind of like a family of majors. Um, per se. And every college lays this out differently. And they call those family of majors a school. So at Sonoma State, we have five different schools. Um, we have the School of Science and Technology, and you can see all the majors listed there. We have the School of Social Sciences. We have the School of Art and Humanities. The School of Business and Economics, which is very easily understood as just business and economics, which is super helpful. And the School of Education, which houses our early childhood studies program. So that's the way it's kind of broken up in into schools. So when you hear that word 
talked about around campus know that they're they're referring to a family of majors that are kind of related to one another. So, um, and they all work together and, and share resources and things like that. So I'm just going to briefly go over um, the slide deck so you can kind of see a little bit of a snapshot of what each school is. And in the Canvas page, there's also some that have brochures in here as well. So you can take a look and see more about the major if you're if you're taking a look at it. So, um, and even if you already know the major that you're in, like if you know like I'm bio or I'm Hutchins and, and that's what it is, great. It's good to know a little bit about what the other departments do too, because you will again, take those general education classes within the other departments. So everyone here will take a history, a political science, um, a biology of some kind. So it's just good to have that, um, that knowledge of kind of what's out there. So the first one they start out with is um, the School of Arts and Humanities. So um, I really like this school um, because they have um, all the different languages, they have all the different cultural uh, majors, uh, which are American Multicultural Studies, um, Chicano Latino Studies, and our Native American Studies program, um, which is not a major, but it's a it's a program um, on campus where a lot of students take classes. So also housed in here is art, English, um, you know, our German Studies program, philosophy, theater arts, um, a lot of those different ones. So, and then each time it goes through and it, it has a little bit about what each um, major is about. Um, the other word that you'll hear sometimes um, within majors is the word concentration. Again, why are people thinking so hard about their major? That that's what I thought when I first heard this as well. A concentration within a major is something, it's like a specific emphasis, like you're going in for um, a specific part of that major. Some majors do not have concentrations. Like if you're a psychology major, you're a psychology major and, and that's it. There's there's no specific concentrations outlined within the major. Um, whereas something like theater, um, you could concentrate in acting or in technical theater or in theater studies or in like research. So there's a lot of different areas and everyone, um, every major does it a little bit differently. Um, some majors really want you to declare your concentration right away. Others are kind of like, oh, you can, you can just do the general first couple classes and then sort of figure it out. So um, some majors like business, you don't declare your concentration till later um, until you're a junior. Whereas some other majors like GEP, you know, having that concentration declared can kind of say, oh, okay, I'm gonna take these classes, whereas another concentration would do something different. So again, um, I'm not sure if I shared this with you all already, but I said this to my um, students when I was, you know, helping them prepare for college back when I worked there, and that college is a different language, and it's best to try and get as much wrapped around the language as possible, and um, and hopefully through this conversation, like Natalie, Amy, and I can, can kind of start sharing some of the language that's there um, in terms of like what all, all of these mean. So, yeah. And so you, we'll just kind of go through these real quick. Um, you know, next one is art and art and history. So, you know, they have like a bachelor's of fine arts studio concentration. So, and then you also have minors um, and minors are, kind of like just smaller majors. They're usually only about 20 units. Some of them are 16 units. So maybe it's only like four or five classes that you get to um, experience. And But you still have that on your degree. It will say, you know, major in business, but minor in French or something like that. So it'll actually be reflected in your degree and people who are looking to employ you will see that. So it's always nice to, to grab a minor. Um, I've talked with a few students, you know, during the one-on-ones where, you know, Spanish might be a really optimal minor for many of you because you all, you know, maybe did well in the AP test or 
maybe it's you know already spoken at home and so like you're already really familiar with the language and it would just be you know three or four classes in terms of getting a minor like that if that's something you'd want so um our Chicano Latino studies, um, one of the majors that I love to describe as small but mighty. Um, really, really great faculty here, and they have um, a teacher preparation track within their major. So you get to learn a lot about the Chicano Latino experience, and they host all sorts of um, community events. And Professor Ron Lopez is, I can't say enough about that gentleman. He is a fantastic human being. So, um, Next up, we've got communications and media studies, or as we like to call it, Sonoma State, comms. Um, comms is really great about learning uh, different areas. And the neat part about comms is you get to actually go in and do some of the stuff you're seeing on the, on the pictures. Um, it's divided into four different sections that you can study. Um, you can study about the radio station that we have on campus. You can study about the uh, TV station. Um, our public relations firm, and then our newspaper, the, um, the Sonoma State Star. So those are all things you can get to uh, have hands on um, with. And we have some really excellent faculty, and one of them has even worked with a professional baseball team in the area. So they've, they've got some really great people who are um, doing some wonderful things over there. Um, English is a fantastic major. Concentrations in literature, creative writing, and uh, a secondary teaching preparation program. So if you wanted to be a high school English teacher, this is a good, good option for you. Um, and just, yeah, again, great faculty. Um, they often have courses where they have a specific like topic that they cover. So maybe one, one semester it's science fiction, the next semester it's, you know, something different in a different era or genre. So um, French, um, a lot of good cultures, a lot of good study abroad options um, within the major. Again, a very small department, but really, really connected. Um, definitely a lot of majors are encouraging study abroad and a lot of majors make studying abroad work um, there. And with the question yesterday, I know that's a topic that people are interested in. All right, Hutchins. Um, I know a lot of people here are already in Hutchins, which is great, so, uh, the liberal studies program. And there's different tracks for um, teacher preparation or just doing the interdisciplinary studies. And for those of you who are not in this major, it is a small um, discussion base. So if you are, are the person in high school that always was like raising their hand and was like wanting to be part of the discussion, like this is a really good major option for you. They have their own general education pattern. So basically if you do Hutchins um, and complete the first two years there, you have your general education done already because um, it's kind of built in. Um, you're in for a lot of reading, so make sure that you you have time for for spacing and doing a lot of that reading and and thinking and reflection. So, but um, one of the most unique programs here at Sonoma State, absolutely. German, another excellent major with a close knit community. The faculty are really really fun. Um, I've never had somebody take a German class and tell me they've not liked it before. Um, plenty of opportunity to um, study abroad, and they do a lot of film nights. In, in the German club too. So they're one of the most vocal clubs on campus, the German club. Um, music. Our music program is amazing. Um, I can't speak highly enough of it. I've had plenty of friends graduate from the music program. Our new Green Music Center, once we get you to campus, hopefully very, very soon, um, you gotta check out a concert there. They, they absolutely do um, you know, low discount um, tickets and they also have uh, times where they make it free for students that are in EOP and Barta. Um, you can also go and check out the students senior recitals where they do music and those are free as well. Um, there's everything from music education to doing a specific instrument to being a singing major. So um, really, really fantastic faculty and staff and just the beautiful facility they have there. All right, philosophy. Um, philosophy has changed a lot over the past couple of years. Um, they've added a lot of emphasis um, and concentrations over here. So, um, you know, everything from pre-law, uh, because we never really had a pre-law program before, so now I'm really glad they have that up there. Um, concentration in the good life, which is kind of like a how to live a good life um, philosophically. And then science and technology and ethics. Um, they have offered regularly a cyber ethics course for people who are interested in those types of things. And then there's also a concentration in social justice because that's, as we all know, more important than ever. Um, great. 
right. Spanish major. So um, for a lot of students, it's, it's taking um, those 300 level classes, which are, um, you know, tend to be junior, senior year classes and getting involved. And the Spanish minor, like I said, is very, very short. And a lot of you who are coming in with maybe some um, credit or native speaking skills can already have a um, kind of leg up on on Spanish. I also wanted, I wanted to pause real quick and, and share with you about the numbers. And, and Natalie and Yemi, I want you to confirm this for me if you feel like this is true. So the way the numbers work as far as the classes, you've seen things say like 100, 200, 300, 400. What it's supposed to mean is like 100 level classes are for freshmen or first year students. Um, 200 level classes are for sophomores, 300 level classes are for juniors, and 400 level classes are for seniors. So Natalie and Yemi, have you, have you found that the number of the class has matched how quote unquote hard it is all the time? I wanted to hear your experience on that. Um, I think it just depends um, on your class or what you, take um i think my first um like the first 100 courses i took were pretty easy um but i think just being a first year things look hard but they're easy um now that i look at it but i think my third year experiences was very very hard um a lot more time consuming um to get like my research and like analysis stuff done which is what um kind of from the third year to the fourth year is where you start your major classes um so that's when you learn the most about what you're majoring in so i think that was very challenging maybe my first years wasn't that challenging um maybe just like the political science and history part because i'm not a big fan of that but i think other than that it was pretty much easy yeah for me i feel like they do kind of connect like the first year, second year, third year, and like, yeah, like going off like what Nat said, I feel like the first years, they're more, they're less, um, they're less like packed with like what they give you. And so that makes it easier. And as well as like, um, I don't know, so it's a lot of, I felt, well, personally, I feel like the first class is like the hundreds were like reviews kind of, of like high school, a little bit like AP classes, especially if you took AP classes, they kind of feel like that. Um, but definitely going to the 300s and like four, um, like 400s, they're way more like, um, it's heavier on workload and like reading. So reading, although you might not have like homework to do or like turn in, the reading will be a lot. And so they'll be reading like a lot for every single day. And then and that's something important to keep track on because it's like um, what you're learning and what you're gonna, um, what your um, lectures are gonna be about. And so that's what I found a big difference in. But definitely I do think they connect with one another. Yeah, thank you, thank you both for sharing. Um, and I, I like Natalie what you said about how if you have a class or a subject that's been traditionally kind of challenging for you, know that that might continue a bit when you take it, you know, you take the general education level class here, but know that there's also a lot of support through tutoring. And if it's a math and science, there's the MESA program that Dr. Dorico is going to talk about when she comes and, and meets with you all for science and tech. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to, to feel supported. And it's just knowing like, when registering for those classes. And a lot of times, um, with a few exceptions, like the Spanish 300 class I'm talking about, we're, we're not gonna have y'all be in 300 or 400 level classes your first couple of years. Um, it's mainly gonna be the 100 and 200. And, and don't even be worried if you're in like, oh, I got put in political science 200, but I'm still a freshman. Don't worry about it. That's, that's something that can still um, you know, be okay. So I just wanted to, to do that because of the numbers. And if you go and like look at your community college or something like that, know that the numbers are different everywhere. Um, I, I think Sonoma State makes a little bit more sense because it's, you know, one, two, three, four um, compared to some other places. But I just wanted to make that a little bit clearer in terms of like how the numbers work. All right. And then our last, um, you know, uh, art and humanities major that I have a complete bias to is theater, arts, and dance. Um, 
and, and the four concentrations are acting, dance, theater studies, and technical theater. Um, really fantastic um, uh, program of study with a lot of different things to do, a lot to be involved in, in terms of um, being, you know, in plays and dances. And I want to state right here now, you do not have to be a major to audition for anything. So if you want to be in a show or work backstage on a show or theater, something you did in high school that was like part of your community, like you are totally open um, to try and um, be a part of the shows and everything. And I will tell you, if they notice you, they will try to recruit you. Um, I got I got goaded into being a theater major after two years of doing stuff with them. So they 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 work hard to try and get you going on. So I want to pause there and see if anyone has any questions specifically for the art and humanities majors. And you can go ahead and just unmic yourself and um, speak to the group if you want. Um. So I got an email from the Hutchins program mm -hmm. about like classes and stuff. Um, are those the classes I'm going to register for or I'm already registered in? Because I know I'm I'm in a built schedule because I'm in the program. So that's, what, that, that's just my question. Absolutely, yeah. So Hudgens majors, you all are probably, um, if you're not pre-enrolled, you have a specific course you're going to be enrolled in. Um, for Hutchins, you all, each semester, you'll take a LIBS course or liberal studies course. And the first one you'll be in is LIBS 101. And then you'll be in LIBS 102 in your spring semester. And that course is something like nine units, um, nine to 12 units with all of its different parts and pieces. And then you'll also be enrolled probably in a math as well. And because of the way the units work, those will likely be your only two courses. And all during um, registration time, you all actually won't register with me. You'll register with Donna Garbizi, who is your specific Hutchins advisor. She's been doing this for years and years and she knows this backwards and forwards. So she will be there to uh, help you out and answer all your questions. And there also will be an advising session with her during one of the days before registration too. So you'll have plenty of time to ask any Hutchins specific questions out there. So thanks Alexia, that's a really great question. Thank you. Any other art and humanities questions for this school? I will say also, um, uh, the word in passion comes up a lot when it comes for majors. Um, and I think that that, um, that term has gotten more out there, but just to clearly define it, it means that it's a major that has so many people in it, they have to have extra, um, like requirements to get into the major. So if you're undeclared and you're looking for a major that's impacted, there's some extra steps you have to go to. Um, luckily, the vast majority of art and humanities majors are not impacted. Um, and even the one that used to be communications actually is not impacted this semester. So um, if you're interested in something in art and humanities, it's pretty easy to get your way in. And, and you can talk to me about that during a one-on-one -on -one meeting um, about how to do that. All right. So next up is School of Business and Econ. Um, the business administration major is really complex. Um, you actually have to register as a pre-business major before you actually get started in this major. And they give you a very specific course schedule that you take while you are um, a freshman and a sophomore. So things like economics, business management, um, financial, um, you know, a financial type math course. So you'll do all of these courses and then after you complete your second year, you'll transition into your um, concentration where you'll be a business major. And the concentrations are all listed down here on this pie chart. So there's marketing, accounting, management, finance, wine business, which is special for our area because we grow so much um, grapes and make wine in our area. Uh, financial management, and then there's like a special concentration like create your own kind of thing that you work out with an advisor. So all of those are options within the business department. Um, business is impacted and it's probably one of our biggest majors on campus. So um, economics um, also goes into just kind of those broader strokes of economics and it's a smaller major, um, but still within the same department. So. 
And uh, Dr. Visser is an amazing, amazing professor. He's been the chair of the department for a while. He's really approachable and he kind of tells you how it is. And he's, um, he's really great with uh, showing students how to get through this, this major. And he always helps out during orientation a lot too. So really, really nice guy. All right. School of Education for the Early Childhood um, Studies Program. Um, there's a lot of different um, concentrations and you all actually are in an early childhood class while being in Porta because you're in the EDEC 160 AB social justice um, freshman learning community with the exception of maybe those of you that are in Hutchins, unfortunately. But um, this will give you a lot of critical thinking and oral communication skills and we'll kind of do the same things that the Hutchins Libs 101 class will do. So, um, but it's that focus and sort of um, social justice and there's a lot of really really great programs here and a number of different concentrations whether you're looking for education or just other ways to, to help out children so if you want to work or teach you know preschool or working with children this would be a really really great major for you any questions about um, business and econ or uh, early childhood education before i hop into social science Okay, All right. So social science consisting of um, anthropology, criminal justice, um, geography, environment, uh, global studies, history, human development, political science, psychology, sociology, and our women's and gender studies program. So a bunch of really great majors. And of these, um, psychology is the biggest one that's impacted as well as um, our criminal justice program so you need a 3.0 to enter into those majors if you aren't, aren't already registered as one so so anthropology a word that i did not know until i got to college um, is the study of humans generally um, and there's a lot of different areas within it um, everything from human being by behavior to um, archaeology to learning about sign language and sign signing communities so really really great um, major if you want to be outdoors um, a lot of field trips kind of in this one and it's not impacted so really really great um, major where you can kind of take a look at a lot of a wide variety of areas um, criminal justice and criminology um, impacted major as I said on there 3.0 um, but you all are open to take uh, CCGS 201, which is the intro criminal justice class to see if you like this. And it also counts for um, general education credit for social science. So it's a, good, um, it's a good thing if you always wanted to take a look at criminal justice and check out what it's, what it's about. So, and that'll be a class that's available for you for the fall too. All right, geography, environment, and planning, GEP. Um, this is a major that's gone through a lot of changes over the past um, few years. And there's a lot of um, just areas that you can get into, everything from city planning to sustainable development of the environment to environmental policy. So I, I had a friend who went through this major and she now works for um, like the city for environmental protection stuff. So a lot of really, really great um, options there uh, the global studies major um, they actually like want you to have a foreign language and they also want you to travel a lot so if you're interested in any of those the global studies major is all about trying to um, help get you abroad and help see things from just a larger world perspective uh, this is one of those majors where you'll be in very few like global studies classes but you'll just take a lot of classes from a lot of different other majors from anthropology and history and political science and GEP. So there'll be a lot of different um, things to pull from there. History, um, one of um, the most interesting and I think actually one of the more challenging majors on campus just because of the, the high amount of reading that students do in, in the history classes, but um, really, really in depth and the faculty are really great at covering um, a lot of different perspectives. So um, many of um, our, the students in this program have gotten gone on to do um, masters and PhDs and I actually have a friend of mine we actually went to elementary school together here in town and he is now at Boston uh, Boston University doing his PhD and he did his um, undergrad and masters in our history program here at Sonoma State so um, definitely prepares you for 
for life, life beyond. Um, human development is another program like global studies where it's kind of comprised of a lot of different majors sort of put together with different classes. Um, but it's really good if you want to do, you know, that sort of social work and you want to just kind of know how how humans are going through their process and how you want to support them. So um, Dr. Smith is a really, really nice guy and um, you can email him for more info about this program. That's really, really neat too. So um, political science um, is really great to get to know about policy. If you want to look at like being a lawyer and things like that, that's, a, that's a, another route. And then we also have a master's program in public administration here as well. So another small but mighty department on our campus. Um, psychology is probably the biggest department in social sciences and um, there's a lot of places to study both research and um, and clinical practice. So this is one of my majors and I felt fully prepared to become a marriage and family therapist through this program. So really, really great to, to take a look at behavior and a lot of well-rounded classes now at this time. Uh, they also have a 3.0 to enter and they need you to be a sophomore, um, have 45 units done before they uh, let you into the major, which is fine because you'll be doing all your general education part of the pie first before you do psychology. Um, Similar with sociology, um, they are impacted, but they're a little bit easier to declare. And they do a thing, do a lot of things from a wider scope. A lot of the students that I've worked with in the past have been sociology majors and have just really enjoyed what's what's going on. So, um, and then our women's and gender studies program is a really, really fantastic program. Um, you know, like a lot of our cultural programs, I've never heard anybody tell me they had a bad experience in a women's and gender studies class. There's only a couple of faculty, but they have a really, really great um, way of handling their courses. There's also a lot of one unit classes you can take in this area that cover um, like a feminist lecture series or an intro to queer studies where they do lectures um, about different perspectives. That's really neat. So um, great. That was it for social sciences. I wanted to open up the questions and um, Natalie and Yemi, I also wanted you both to, to speak on your majors a little bit, um, especially if I, because I think we've covered them already. Am I correct? Yeah, um, I just wanted to comment as well. Um, for me, I started off just as a social major and then I took a class into criminal justice because I was curious about it. And then I went into like a minor for criminal justice. And then a lot of the class, one thing that I want to let y'all know is that a lot of the classes for social scientists, well, at least in my experience, did a lot of double dipping. So I would take one class for um, my sociology major, but it would also count for my for criminal justice. So that's why I decided to take a minor. But as, m m uh, as I took more classes, I got more interested and I just picked it up as a major. But a lot of the social classes, did line up with the criminal criminal justice class. So I've taken, I think, like a total of four classes that um, counted for both majors. So that helps a lot, and it allows you to get like both of your degrees done, and you kill um, you get done like quicker. So if you're interested in that, I definitely recommend like looking into what classes count for like two classes, and that way that can help you with the minor, or maybe even like me like help you pick up a double major because. Um, they intertwine with each other a lot. So um, that, that's been very helpful. And also like, I just love my major not to start off. Like I just love it and they're very interested. So I definitely recommend just taking like a social class or a criminal justice class, like the intro to them. Um, they're very interesting and maybe you'll, you know, you'll, um, you'll learn something new or you'll find a some cer certain interest in something. But I've definitely had a great experience with my, with my school department. Um, same. So I have a major in sociology. Um, well, my major is in sociology. Um, it's been fun. Like uh, Yami says, um, there's a lot of double dipping within like the courses you take. So sociology has a lot of kind of G requirements, either lower division or higher or um, higher division ones, because they just kind of cross out both of your GEs and your major courses. So it works a lot, just kind of figuring out which ones you want, which ones you don't. Um, within like the sociology 
faculty and staff, they're all very nice. They're all very just kind of passionate of what they do and they really put forward kind of the work and studies they've done and try to connect with you on creating these research like situations and or like think out of the box, think without having somebody or society pressure you think, to think away. Um, and then I have a minor in American Multicultural Studies. So I started off my first year taking um, an FLC in AMCS 165 AMB. Um, where I had my cohort in first semester and second semester. So I think I just fell in love with the idea of like just how America, like the society within like learning of American multicultural studies and different cultures within just one classroom was amazing. Um, and just having professors that are really straight up with you on the situations that are happening around us. Uh, without hesitating or what without feeling like um, they're going to say something wrong. But um, I think both of my kind of experiences have been great. And they're really easy for my opinion, other than like statistics. I think the only class that I took within my major statistics that had me like crying because <laughs> I'm not really good at math and um, nothing that has to do with like quantitative or qualitative stuff. But I think I put my good foot forward within um, my research method class, which I had to do like a lot of statistics um, and it helped a lot. So I really suggest um, if, like Amy says, if y'all consider, um, if y'all aren't declared or just are curious of what sociology is, um, take sociology 201, which is the intro class and it's really, really great. Yeah. Thank you, Natalie and Amy, and, and, and I agree with both of you that, you know, there's a lot of classes that have an intro class that you can take to see if, like, is, is, is this what I want to do? And, you know, nine times out of ten, that class is also a general education class. So I've had, I've worked with students where their whole first year, they have just taken general education classes, completed their general education requirements, trying to search for what it is that feels like it clicks for them. And for some of them, like some people know exactly what they want. Other people, it takes them a little bit longer and there's really no right or wrong. Um, we just wanna make sure we have an idea of maybe by like the end of sophomore year, what you're thinking about in terms of a major, just so that way we can get you out in four years so you can go do what you wanna do. But um, there's plenty of people to discuss this with and please have the major discussion early and often with people. And I'm happy to have it with you during the individual meetings um, and please feel free to sign up for those today as well. Um, and just be sure to put your name on the, the date that is for today, which is the 25th on the, on the spreadsheet there. And finally, we're gonna just cover real quick uh, science and tech. Um, a lot of these majors are very small um, and a lot of them have a lot of specific requirements. And so when Dr. Dorico comes and talks to you, she's the main science and tech advisor. She'll be able to go over these in great detail, but I wanted to just show them to you so you know what your menu is. Um, statistics as a major, um, there's uh, a bachelor's of science into statistics and then a BA in applied statistics that, that you can get into. Um, and there's Dr. Dorico's name and uh, contact down there already. Um, so math is just a really good place. A lot of people use this as a second major if they're doing like psychology and they want to get into research or something like that. So it's a good, um, very employable degree. Um, chemistry and biochemistry. Um, Dr. Works is a really, really great um, professor and definitely there to help. And then Christina, who's one of our other um, bridge advisors, is one of the liaison people for chemistry and biochemistry. If you have any um, questions about those those majors. So a lot of a um, lot of chemistry and a lot of work goes into this particular major. Um, biology, which is impacted, there's a ton of different uh, degree types, a bachelor's of arts and a bachelor's of science, and then also a ton of different um, emphases, whether it's zoology, ecology, marine biology, physiology. Um, this is also a major that can lead towards like a medical profession. So there's a lot of ways you can use um, a biology major and there's also a lot of um, people you can contact for support about this as well. All right, our computer science program, um, really, really tight-knit group. A lot of um, students work together in this major to complete the courses because they are very challenging, but um, 
they also have a very specific plan for how they want you to move through these courses too. So if you're interested in computer science, um, we will uh, talk to me about it and we can get you started on that, on that specific track. Um, so geology and earth science, um, there's a lot of options for general education classes for geology. Um, we have a class that's on, um, it's called the age of the dinosaurs where you just learn about dinosaurs. Um, and then there's another upper division 300 level class that is about the Hawaiian Islands in geology. So there's a lot of really cool um, classes here that are fun and can take a look at different types of topics. Right. Our electrical engineering is our only engineering major on campus and it's very, very specific. And I would definitely con uh, get you in contact with Dr. Dorigo if you're thinking about this major because of the way it's structured. So if you are interested in electrical engineering, you'll let me know and um, I will connect you with her for sure. All right, our kinesiology program, um, I know it says impacted on here, but it just went listed as not impacted. And this is for uh, people who wanna do exercise science, um, you know, uh, be a occupational therapist or a physical therapist, or just work in anything that involves kind of movement um, and other kinds of just act, being active. So kinesiology was another word in college that I did not know what that was until I got here. So it's, um, you know, the, the study of, and, uh, of movement and sort of exercise. All right. Math majors, there's a couple of different majors here, including some that lead to teaching, um, and it's a non-impacted major. So math, um, again, another very small but important major. Uh, nursing. Nursing is one of the majors that you can't change into. Um, students get enrolled in, in pre-nursing when they're accepted into the university, and then um, but you can work with um, Jamie Grisser, who is one of the advisors in the advising center about other paths that lead to either getting into the nursing degree or um, other things you can graduate with if you want to become a nurse. And I can refer you to her if um, you have questions about that. And finally, last but not least, physics and astronomy. So the astronomy is a minor here um, on campus, but they have some really, really cool classes. And we do have our own observatory here. Um, on campus once we get y'all here. And then our physics program um, has a concentration in astrophysics as well. So another, uh, another one of our small science programs. So any questions on science and technology majors? All right. Well, thank you all so much for um, being attentive. Um, I want to also point out that on the um, Canvas page, there are some videos about meeting the majors for some areas. Um, and for all our Hutchins students, there is a Hutchins video on there. So please check that out. Um, additionally, there are some um, forms that I'm gonna, we're going to share with you all that are on the um, on the Canvas page as well that are first year advising guides. So there are guides on classes that might be helpful to take your first year if you are this major. So there's one for each one and they're very, very colorful. So go check those out. And if you have questions, please sign up with me for a one-on-one -on -one meeting and we can talk more about a major that is of your interest. Um, and again, I'm not asking you to decide your major during bridge, but I want you just to be thinking about it and seeing, seeing what's happening for you. So. Um, Natalie and Yemi, do you have other things to add at this point? Um, I don't think so. I think I just have a thing for my team. Um, team Wanda, if you want to meet with me during your academic hours, I know you're supposed to work on your academic hours and your academic assignments, but if you want to meet with me one-on-one, -on -one, just put it on the chat privately, and then I can set up a Zoom and email it to you. Um, but don't stress over it if you don't need to or don't want to, that's fine. But I do hope we get to meet one-on-one -on -one soon. Um, but other than that, I don't have anything else. Yemi? Yes, I would just like to share that. Um, basically what Nat said, uh, so Team Danny Phantom, uh, you do have this time to go ahead and do um, finish your assignments since you do have some work. But uh, if you wanna go ahead and meet with one-on-one, -on -one, do let me know on the chat and that we can make that happen. Um, 
send out I'll send out a zoom link and uh, we can meet one on one but um, like Nat said you don't have to uh, do take this time to uh, finish any work that you need to and yeah I think that's all I really have to say um, all right thank you both and I'm going to drop in the chat the link to the cultural affinity group um, meeting for today and it is on the canvas page as well so there is that for you and um, and that's for our African American and, and Black student union populations. So that will be um, there for today. And then I also, um, let me see. I think there was one other thing I wanted to share with you all. Oh, right. I'm going to email you all um, collectively. You'll be on one of three emails and I'm just going to CC your PERTA advisor just so you can see their name and info on there since um, you are split pretty evenly between the three of them. So I will include that um, there. And for those of you who um, have Alma as your advisor, she is um, going to be coming back from maternity leave pretty soon. So you probably won't get a response for her right away. Um, and you'll be working with uh, Dayana for the time being, time being before she comes back, just so you know. So. Maybe I'll CC um, both of them on that email. So I'll um, get you all on that real quick. And you know, best of luck with all the academic things. Um, check out the extra content that's on there and come see me if you have any questions, all right? Thank you all for listening and you're an awesome group and we'll, we'll see you next time. Bye.